Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my April allotment tour. The video covers the jobs I've been doing and what I hope to get up to over the next few weeks. The video is divided into chapters. You can see the contents of the video below in the description. So let's get started. As a quick introduction as to what's growing down here, I have my line of blueberries. Next to the line of blueberries, I have my alliums. The garlic that I sowed in the autumn last year and the onion sets at the end there, which I planted a few days ago. Next to those, I have two beds with freshly planted seed potatoes. Alongside the potato beds, I have my leeks. The leeks I planted last summer, and I've been harvesting them for soups. That's been great. And then up from the leek bed, I have a bed which I've dug over, but I haven't planted yet. I need to work out what I'm gonna put in there. Next to those two beds, I have another bed waiting to be planted. And up from that, I have my broccoli. The broccoli's in season as well. And this year looks to be a particularly good year. The bed covered in fleece contains my perpetual spinach. And next to that bed is my strawberry bed. And there are the first signs of the strawberries coming to life. Plenty of green leaves now underneath the wire mesh that protects them. I also have this big rhubarb plant in the bed next to my fruit cage. And next to the rhubarb plant, I'm thinking of using the bed to grow herbs and flowers. I have an apple tree, which has been on the plot for about a year now. There's a fruit cage that contains gooseberries and currants. And I've recently extended the fruit cage so that the frame covers a row of hybrid berries, Tabri, Loganbury and Boysenbury, and a row of raspberries. I also have this polytunnel which I use mainly for growing tomatoes, cucumbers, and this year, chilli. And I'm using the polytunnel at the moment for germination. The blueberries are now in flower. It's great to see them in flower because that will be where the fruit forms. I am a little worried that it's been so cold just at the time where the plants are coming into flower. I hope the blossom hasn't been damaged by the cold weather. I'll just have to see what happens. A couple of months ago now, at the base of the plants, I put a thick mulch around them to give them a feed. It's not too late to do that. Some years I've mulched the plants about this time of year. It's good to do that before they enter full growth, just to make sure they've got all the nutrients they need. It's great to see the garlic looking like this. The plants now are over a foot in height. One of the advantages of planting in the autumn is now at this time of year, the plants are relatively mature and they're benefiting from the moist soil. A later planting, for example, putting the cloves in in March. The problem is, is that by the time the plants have got going, the hot weather's arrived and the soil is relatively dry. An autumn planting means that the plants can take full advantage of the moist soil at this time of year. This bed contains the onion sets. I planted these a few days ago and I'm planning to make a video to show how I planted them. But what's great is that after only a few days, some of the sets have already started to germinate. Now it's only a few of the onions that have germinated, but nevertheless it's great to see that they've started. I'm using biodegradable weed control fabric, because if I didn't at this time of year, there would be weeds springing up everywhere over the next few weeks that would actually give me quite a lot of work. The next two beds contain my potatoes. I have created a video on how I planted the potatoes and I'll link to that. On the top it's possible to see the mulch I applied to feed the potatoes. The mulch is compost I made through hot composting. I've been really pleased with how the hot composting is working out. It's given me a lot of compost to use. I still buy compost for germinating seeds, but to enrich the soil to feed it, either laying it on top or digging it in. The hot compost seems to be ideal. The leeks are looking really good. To my eyes, the leaves are looking slightly yellow. Other years, the leeks have swelled up more, but this spring has been more challenging than normal. We had a period of hot weather and then a lot of cold weather, and the plants haven't grown as much as they have in previous years, but nevertheless, they're still providing a good harvest. What has performed really, really well this year has been the broccoli. I've had some really big harvests from the plants already, Unfortunately, the cold weather over the last few days has temporarily stopped the new growth. But there's already good signs that more spears are developing now that the sun's out. I hope to get a few more pickings off the plants. 
I hope this is coming out well on the camera. You can see a really good head there. And actually there are a number of spears all over the plants. I hope to come down here tomorrow, take another picking with some leeks and make a delicious broccoli and leek soup. Underneath the fleece I have my perpetual spinach. I had been planning to remove the fleece by now, but we've had some really cold nights recently. I'll remove the fleece when there's no more risk of frost. Let's take a look underneath. A few weeks ago, I came down and really thinned the plants out. The plants are now spaced about nine inches apart, allowing plenty of room to grow. And I think they're now looking really, really good. And best of all, nothing seems to be eating them. Slugs can be a problem down here. Well, I think the slugs can be a problem anywhere. These plants here are radish plants that have started to go to seed. I need to dig these up before they flower and send their seeds everywhere. I have two rows of perpetual spinach, one on either side, and I planted the radish in the middle. What's quite interesting to see is that the perpetual spinach, which is on the right-hand side of the bed, which gets less sun because of the height of the raised bed, the plants are noticeably smaller than on the left-hand side. That will correct itself over the summer, but I think that will be an advantage because those plants will be slower to mature and will therefore extend the picking season. It's great to see the rhubarb plant looking as big as it is now. It's definitely two to three weeks behind where I thought it would be owing to the weather. To harvest the stem, I reach down into the plant grab a stem by its base and just rip it off. Just a reminder, it's the stems that are eaten, the leaves are poisonous. Over the last couple of weeks the apple tree has started to come back to life. The leaves are still pretty small and compared to my other fruit trees there's no sign yet of the blossom. It is relatively late but in this cold spring I think that's a good thing. I'm not sure how well this is coming out on the camera, but the strawberry plants on the sunny side of the raised bed have got plenty of leaves on them now. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to lift off the mesh and have a good inspection underneath the leaves to look for sawfly. I had a problem with that last year. I'm now inside the fruit cage looking at the gooseberry plant. The gooseberry plant is covered in leaves and have these really delicate yellow-green flowers on them, or yellow-green blossom. That's a great sign, providing that the recent frosts aren't damaging them. The black currant plant next to it is also springing back into life. I think the sign here as well of the blossom forming. Next to the blackberry plant I have this red currant bush and at the far end of the fruit cage two more gooseberry bushes. It's a really good sight to see all the plants coming back into life. Now that the plants have leaves on them, it's possible to see the difference that the pruning has made. I've got plenty of room all around the plants to be able to walk around easily. It also means that the air will circulate more freely around the plants, which should help to keep the plants and the fruit disease free. The hybrid berries are also coming back into leaf. This is my tabri plant. For most of March the stems look completely leaf free and it's still too early for the blossom to be appearing. Tabries are great, I'm just running my finger along the stem. No spines on those. The loganberry plant is behind the tabri in terms of its leaves. There are a few very small leaves forming and it is possible to see just how thorny, how many spines are on those canes. Definitely less enjoyable to grow than the tabri. You can see just how many there are on this cane. Quite small, but really sharp. And then along from my loganberry plant, I have my boysenberry plant. Now these are a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry and now the plant's in its second year it's really exciting to see just how many canes I have. It was a tiny thing when I planted it. There are plenty of leaves forming and what's interesting to me is that the canes are spine free. And also in colour they're actually very very similar to my raspberry canes. If I can keep the birds off them it's looking good for a harvest this year. The raspberry canes are also coming back to life. Plenty of leaves on them now. I'm growing a few different varieties of raspberry. My raspberry canes have had a chequered life down here. A couple of years ago, the bed really got out of control. Last year was one of recovery. And I now have clusters of really healthy looking canes all along the raspberry row. 
if I can take good care of the canes this summer, I hope the canes will fill out all along the road. I've applied a mulch of straw along the base of the raspberry canes. The intention is to keep moisture in the soil because what I've learned is that raspberries like their roots nice and moist. They seem to grow much better that way. Outside the polytunnel I have my flower bed, but because of the cold weather nothing seems to be happening right now. And lastly I'll show you what's inside the polytunnel. Now what's in this big tray here? A collection of peas and beans. I only planted those a few days ago, but I'm hoping that they'll germinate quickly when the weather starts to warm up again. The polytunnel is unheated and to provide even more protection to heat loving plants, I have placed some pots inside unheated propagators. Inside these propagators here are my squash plants, courgettes, cucumber, summer squash and winter squash. Again they're recently planted. I like to plant my seeds relatively late because if I plant early what I find is that I have lots of seedlings that I need to protect from the frost which just creates more work for me. Inside this propagator here I also have some flower seeds and my chilli plants. It's been a really slow germination season but that should all change with a few days of sunshine. If I just lift off the lid of the propagator I can show you these choir discs. These expand with water and seem to be a really good way of quickly planting seeds. I'm trying those as an alternative to these Rockwell cubes. I find germinating seeds in Rockwell really quite reliable but what I don't like about Rockwell is that the cubes themselves aren't biodegradable, they're a waste product that just need to be thrown away or incorporated into the soil but they don't break down. Therefore I want to stop using them. And these cocoa discs or choir discs seem to be an excellent alternative. They use coconut hair and are a natural waste product of the coconut industry that biodegrades. I'm really hoping that my experiment with using them works and then I'll stop using rock wool entirely. And that's it. That's the end of the allotment tour in April. I hope you liked the video. Please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.